Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. So today we're going to be taking a look at how you can get started with working with the attribute sample texture node, which is a brand new node that now exists in Blender. And of course, for those who like to do some motion graphic style stuff, or maybe you want to control your geometry node by simply using textures, video files. In today's video, we're going to explain a lot of things that can simplify the process and help you understand what happens in the background and how you can take advantage of these new cool features. Now, for those who like to get along with this, all you need is a fresh copy of Blender 2.93 and of course we're definitely going to get started with it now final files is going to be available to patrons so link is going to be in the description just in case you want to support the channel now to get started all you need is you know blender 2.93 create a simple grid and then you have your normal cube right there now next which we need to do is select the object and drag this all the way up click right here and go over to the geometry node editor now i'll explain a couple of things to you guys if you like to apply the geometry node onto this object you need to select that object and click on the plus sign right here to add that and we're going to do a couple of scatters so i'm just going to get a point distribute number one and then get the point instancing which is going to be number two click right here and add that simple cube and that is how we get started with things all right now there are two things which i would like to explain to you guys well one of them is the brand new attribute sample texture now this one is what you can use to drive textures across your geometry node but then there is another attribute that is assigned to this that you guys probably don't know about and that attribute is known as the uv map so what is this uv map attribute and how do you work with it so the uv map attribute is an attribute that is assigned to your object and this is what tells textures how to be placed directly onto your model now for every model that you have in blender there is always a uv map now if you have a model and whether you're working in blender 3d studio max any other app and there is no uv map attribute or there is no uv applied to this that way you will probably not have your textures applied properly and you might just simply settle for things like you know the triplanar texturing or projection so how do you see your uv maps and how much uv maps do you have so for that you need to select the object in our case we're selecting the grid and you need to go over to your object data properties then down here you would see your uv maps if you click down here you'd notice you have the uv map and the same thing that happens for your uv maps is also the same thing that can happen for your vertex color so your vertex color is, is also another attribute that you can work with so you can create multiple ones now for those who want to see how this vertex color thing works directly in blender i'm going to link a video that will take you over to that and you can see this in action now your uv map is not the only you know thing that you can have as the name you can change this to any other thing but for this video let's keep it as uv map and then take a look at how you can get started with it so for this example i'm going to bring in the attribute color ramp and if i connect this here you'll see that we have this section that calls for an attribute so for this i'm just going to put in the uv map okay so we have that now the results which we want to get we want it to be targeted to something now for this case what we would like it to be targeted to is a scale so you can now see how easy this is so whatever thing that's going on here that is being driven around here we want them to be responsible for the scale and that is why you can see that here we can also do the same thing for rotation as rotation is also another one and you can also see that in action so if we move this back and forth you can see this so one other thing to keep in mind if you're new to these things is whenever you see a black texture it simply means that it's not going to be visible or you know the value is turned to zero and whenever you start seeing a white texture that value is set to one so for this case it is exactly the same thing so moving this backwards just a little bit we can now start seeing how much things that we can create now one thing which we can do is taking a look at the new texture so let's actually type in the word sample and we'll get the attribute sample texture i'm just going to connect that there connect this here and of course you know the drill by now we have this as the uv map and then we're just going to make this one scale okay so we're just going to make this scale and press the enter key now unfortunately nothing is happening here why the reason why nothing is happening here is because there is no texture being assigned to this so how do we make textures first things first if you go over the texture section you would notice we have the new click on the new button and it says the type that you want to load in is either an image or a movie in the first case we're going to test this thing out with the pre-built set of textures that exist in blender 
and we're going to use the simple clouds. Now, if we get the cloud in, we can do some very cool stuff. First of all, we can increase the size, which is cool. And then we can go over to the colors and start doing some stuff. Maybe increase the contrast just to get a bit more black and white in there and some grays. All right, that might make sense. And then we can also play with the brightness just a little bit and see what we can get. All right, this doesn't look bad. Click right here and assign that as the texture. And once you do that, the first thing which you would notice is uh, you literally don't see much stuff, all right? You don't see so much stuff. The reason is because the scale of this entire thing is too much. So how do we deal with the scale? We need to bring in the point scale. And once you bring in that point scale, you click right here and go over to vector and you can start reducing this. So you can hold down shift, click and drag all the way down and give a uniform attributes to all of this like 0 0.02 and you would notice that they go all the way down there or if you would like to work a little bit more procedurally you can still come in here and type in the value node click right here set this to 0 0.02 and then connect this right over there so at any point in time you increase this this takes charge of everything going on here so i'm just going to drop this to 0 0.0 all right three looks good okay let's make that three and for here i might increase the density to about 100 and that way you would now start noticing that we have this so wherever we have white like serious pure white like places like this you notice the cube is set to one and wherever we have blacks like this the cube is set to zero and right over here where we have some gray points you will start noticing that these cubes are set to very tiny points so depending on how the progression happens that is how you get to see the scale of the cube. And this is happening because we are dealing with the point scale and we're getting our data and our result as a scale. And you can actually do lots of things with this. So if I go all the way down here and I start making changes, you'll notice, okay? So you can do some very cool stuff. And for those who like to animate this, of course you can animate these things yourself. You can play with the size, how you want things to be. And you can get some cool stuff one cool stuff which you can also do which i think you know it's nice to explain this to you guys as well is you can throw in a mat okay so there is a vector mat node that is here so since we already have that attribute called the uv map all right so we have this one called the uv map i'm just going to copy that and then we want a result and the result which you're looking at is probably the same result for the uv map so what we want is we want this attribute and these other attributes which we're going to add in to give us a result right here, okay? Now, what we would like to do now is change this to a vector. And vectors are RGBs and, you know, XYZs. And because this is what they are, we can now say whatever position that we have here, we want to add it to whatever position that is here. This is going to be driven by this and this. So our UV map, let me actually show you guys what that UV map looks like. So if we click right here and go over to the UV editor, and if I select the grid and press the tab key, you can see the UV editor right over here. Okay, so that makes sense. So what we want to do is we're telling Blender that whatever value that we have here, alongside with whatever value, we want these results to be the both values combined. So that would make more sense because if we now select this and start moving this, you would notice we are moving across the X axis. Okay, so we're moving across this axis. I'm just going to go ahead and set this one out and then we can do the same thing and move across this axis as well. So for those who like to animate this or you want to do some animation, of course, you can right click and have some key insertions and get some good results like so. So you can also do the same thing like this. Very cool stuff. And you can have fun doing this. And this is uh, this is going to be very, very cool for lots of people. So now that we've looked at this, what about bringing in an image? So for an image or a cool image, maybe you have an image, you want to use an image across this entire thing. You can do that. So click right here from the type and set this to image. And then you can click on open to bring in an image. So we already have a couple of images set out before. So I'm just going to click and bring this one in. Let me show you guys what I'm doing. And just bring this simple one in. And we have this image as 0, 0, 0. So with this image here, we can take a look and see what we have. By default, this is, uh, this is typically what we can get here. And I'm just going to take this right over and let's close that. So now that we have this going, we could go in here and reduce the size. So I'm just going to set this to 0 0.02 like we did before. Actually, I think we need to set it down a little bit more. So maybe 0 0.1 
All right, that looks cool. Let's increase the size a little bit more. So I'm just going to make this about uh, 2,000. That's, uh, that's quite a lot, but maybe we should make it even way more. So 5,000 looks good. So with 5,000 here, you can see what we have going on for us. Nice stuff. But then some of you guys may want to push things a little bit further. So how do you want to do that? Maybe you want to texture directly on top of what you already have. So for that, you might need to click right here and then go over to where you have your image editor. Now within your image editor, you can select what texture you have and then switch it from view to paint. Click on the paint section and let's tap N on the keyboard to expose this and move this one a little bit further, we can start making some paintings. And you notice as I paint across as well, you can see that we have these things happening. For those who want to make some changes directly in their stuff, and you still notice that the same principles of black and white exist. So it doesn't matter if you're loading a colored image or a black and white, what happens is Blender actually sieves out the gray points and also the black and the white points of your image and uses those values to drive your geometry. So right here, we have this going on. Let me go ahead and scale this down to a reasonable point like so. And we have this one here. So what about if you would like to play back a movie or you want to play back a sequence? So all we need to do now is go all the way back here and simply hit the word discard. Click right here to close that. Click on open and locate the movie file that we were working with. So the movie file that we want to work with is a free movie file that I got off the internet or you can create your own and you would notice that it looks exactly like this. And for those thinking about the scale, because this is seriously black and white. Okay. So if it's seriously black and white and you can see that right there, there is uh, solid colors everywhere. And you can also notice they have some tiny colors down there. So because we have this as so, what we can do next is we can drag this all the way up, click on this button, go over to where we have our timeline right there. So for press the playback button, you notice that it's not playing back. The reason is because let's drag this one all the way out here. We never defined the number of frames. So I'm just going to define this to 1,500. Press the playback button again. Let's see what we have. It doesn't work because there is no auto refresh. So if I click on auto refresh, bounce this back, click right here and press the playback button, you would now notice that we have this playing back. So this way you can load up any image that you have directly into your scene and start getting things happening. Or you can play with any video footage that you have and scatter things and scatter some cool points with it. Now, something else which I'd like to share with you guys is this, that most people might have tried this before and you seem to have not gotten it to work. What I'm looking at is, if for example, I add in a solidifier, and you notice if I crank this up, nothing happens. Nothing is happening because of the hierarchy. For you to get things happening with this, you need to move this all the way up and that way you'll be able to have some cool effect. So all of your modifiers will still work as far as you position them properly. So one of the modifiers I'm gonna share with you guys is this. So if we go all the way to the simple deform and let's actually rotate this. So I'm just going to select that grid go all the way here and rotate this to about 90 degrees. So we have this one there. So let's say we want to play within the, with the twist within this axis. You need to move this all the way to the top and that way you'll be able to see it. So I need to position this all the way here. And from this point, you can start making some cool stuff. And that's definitely going to be about it. So we've covered a couple of grounds in terms of how you can drive your geometry node by simply using both animated and non-animated textures. And we've also taken a look at what these UV attributes are and how you can play with it. So lots of grounds have been covered and this is going to be very, very beneficial for most of you guys that would want to do some, you know, stylized stuff or maybe you are looking at how you can play with motion graphics directly with blender and also alongside with the geometry node this is going to be what your while so tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section and of course if you like the video or you learned something from this you can go ahead and give it a like and don't forget to share with a friend and if you're new here it's going to be amazing for you to hit the subscribe button and also turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next video or the next update and until i see you guys again with a tutorial update free friday tutorial tuesday tips and tricks things like this peace